All right, today I'm going to talk about how to mess up the controls in a first-person shooter game, the Nintendo way, Metroid Prime. First off, let me get this out of the way. Metroid Prime, I wanted to like this game just like I did many other games, but of course, I went into this game with an open mind, and I just hate this game. But let me just start right off the bat with the number one problem. The control scheme is so awkward. It's like they didn't even try to make a good control scheme, shall we say that? Okay, let me just start the game off, shall we? So, this game could pretty much be summed up as Nintendo's attempt at making a first-person shooter. Just like how Pikmin and Pokemon... Pikmin was Nintendo's attempt at a real-time strategy, and Pokemon and Mother 3 and the Mother series are Nintendo's attempts at making RPGs. But let's start this game off with the key problem. The game's atmosphere and setting is just meh. The game takes place in generic sci-fi atmosphere 420. Let me just get the first part out of the way. For a GameCube game released in the year this was, the graphics are pretty good. They run at 60 FPS, and they do the job well. That's the one good part of the game. The controls, on the other hand, total disaster. The controls on this game are a total disaster play-wise. You see, many games had been released before this. On the PC, on the PS2, on the PS1 and N64. And of course, this game came out after a certain Xbox game, which shall be known as Halo 1. If you don't know what that game did to gaming, let me tell you. It invented a popular control scheme with two analog sticks, one having you move around, up and down, and strafe, while the other one had you looking around, and the control scheme pretty much translated the well-known and famous WASD control scheme used on pretty much nearly every PC game since Quake to the consoles. And that's pretty much what that game did. This game on the other hand, nope, ignore what that game did in other games and do its own thing. Because the controls are terrible. So let me tell you how bad they are. I'm just going to link in the description the control layouts the game used, but if you're not going to do that, let me just sum the game up. You move the first analog stick up, down, left, right to move up, down, and look, kind of like what the original Doom did. Unlike Doom though, the aiming in this game is a total joke. You have to look up and down, but to aim, you have to push the left button, and then turn your guy around. Is there any way to map the controls? Nope. You just get a few settings which let you turn on inverting, and turn off inverting. And that's all you get. That's really all the controls. There's no way to map the controls, so you can play it with a more conventional control layout. Nope. You're stuck with this clunky and archiac golden eye style control scheme where you have to push a button and lock on. And remember, the GameCube has two analog sticks, so there's no real excuse for this. To scan objects or use objects, instead of pressing a button like you did in many other first person shooters since Doom, the game forgets that those exist and you have to go into scan mode. This was done to promote immersion, but then again, there were other first person shooters that came out years before this that also had exploration as a gameplay mechanic. I mean, it's really not like there were FPS's before Metroid Prime that did have exploration. I mean, those definitely did not exist, right? Because really, that's what you do in the whole game. You run around, shoot stuff, while having to suffer from the terrible controls, and then you also have to explore and stuff where you get to find out the story, which is told through text logs, because after all, text logs, I mean, not audio logs, not that stuff, just text logs, I mean, there were games that had better stories and came before this, like the ones I showed you, but of course, 
even if you forgot those games existed, this game just wouldn't be that good because this game in the end just feels boring and the same as many other games. And better controls? Well, there were PC and console games that did that before this. And with the PS and and it can't just be because it was a different system because stuff like Halo 1. You had PS2 games copying Halo 1's control scheme for a main reason. It actually worked. This on the other hand, you have to go to a visor mode just to push a button. I mean, imagine if in say Quake you had to go into a visor mode just to push just to open up a door. That wouldn't be too fun. I mean, sure, I know they were trying to go for an immersive feel, but the problem is, this game just feels boring and clunky because of it. In the end, this game is just a forgettable mess. The only thing that's not forgettable are the controls. The controls are so bad, you'll remember the controls when you're trying to... You know, think of bad games, the worst controls you've played. You can just say, oh, play Metroid Prime. And you'll be like, ew, w w what is this crap? And then you'll wish you played Sonic 06 or other more laughable games if you're looking for a laugh. All in all, avoid this game. And trust me, there are better games of exploration before this game and after this game. And maybe it's because I've been playing other games that this game just doesn't seem so good. Maybe it's because I don't just play games with one company logo on it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.